sad reality in Australia is that most people will never own real estate in the next 10 to 15 years. And with so many Australians relying on property as a source for their wealth in the future, it does mean that it could be a really sad reality for most Australians. Now in this video, I wanna share with you some really telling signs of what's happening right now, why people will own nothing and be happy, but also a simple solution to the entire problem and something that you can start implementing today. If you're interested in what my thoughts are, definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, personal development and all things financial freedom. In the depths of TikTok and the conspiracy theories that have been going around for the past few years, there's this concept of you will own nothing and be happy. And it's where we're against the system, but I don't wanna make this video about conspiracy theories. And rather than focusing on that, I wanna focus on things you can control. Because the truth is that if you believe that you have no control over your future, it means that you don't have the power to change what you can change. And what I believe in is that everything is your own fault. You need to take accountability of how your actions can change your future. Now, there are a couple of key concepts as to why we are finding ourselves in this situation and why you might not be getting ahead. You might be making more from your income at your job, but you're still feeling like you're falling behind. You might find that you now have the deposit to purchase a property, but just don't have the borrowing capacity to actually execute, or the flip side, which is you don't have the deposit because everything is so expensive, you find it hard to save, but you do have the ability to borrow, but you just can't access any of the equity or using that cash to purchase a property. Now, how have we landed ourselves as Australians in this situation? And before you wanna jump on the bandwagon and say it's immigrants, Ravi, it's immigrants, that's the answer. I don't think that is the only answer. Again, we can only control what we can control and that gives us power to execute. Now, focusing on our own actions, one of the biggest things that stop us from going and achieving financial wealth, I see it every day, it's this concept of social norms and expectations. So what are social norms and expectations? Well, it's things that you've grown up learning. So if you think about it, we all got taught pretty much if you were born here in Australia or came here really early and did schooling here, your parents often told you one thing, go get good grades at school, go to uni, buy your house, get married, have kids, and then retire like the rest of us at 65 with little to no choice. Now, most of us have actually gone down that path. I started down that path. I went to school, got good grades, became school captain, happy days, then went to uni, got a grad position, got my full-time job, and I was following the social norm. Now, although I had an internal drive to go and do those things, a large part of it is what your parents tell you or people in your family have told you. And if that doesn't push you, you look at all of your other friends and they're all doing the exact same thing. And unfortunately, 99% of people follow the crowd. And that's why 99% of people will end up retiring poor and probably have no choice. So the moment we can start breaking away from these social norms and fulfilling these expectations from people we don't really care about, we're gonna start living our best lives. We can do things the way we want to. And an example of this is rent vesting. I talk about it on the channel. You know, when you think about renting, automatically your head's probably gone to, well, why would I rent, pay someone else's mortgage? That seems like I'm a loser, I have no money, I'm probably poor. And that's because we grew up thinking anyone that was renting couldn't afford to buy, but that's changed. Right now, you can go ahead and say, well, I can rent because I have the choice of renting and the choice of living wherever I like, but I also choose to invest. And that means I could own more assets than someone who's just simply going out there and buying their own place to say they're house proud. I'm not saying that buying your own place is a loser's game. In fact, you can build so much equity in your own place, but what I am saying is that you simply going out there, purchasing a unit to live in, or buying a house because all of your other friends or family friends are doing the same thing, is actually such a loser's mentality. You actually don't wanna do that. You find that the pressure of having such a large loan is gonna put further pressure on you, your job, and your family. So why would you do it? And what I can tell you right now, in 2024, the easiest way to go and build financial wealth, and I think it'll still apply in 2025, is to go out there, rent with choice where you can within your budget, and then go out and execute in the right markets. Go out there and buy and invest. And I'm not just saying in property, I'm saying across everything. You'll have so much more disposable income because on a million dollar loan, it's costing you almost two times more to own a house versus just renting a place. And if you can use the surplus disposable income into investing into other things, that's how you're gonna get further ahead. You also don't need to think about, hey, I need to have this lavish wedding because I need to impress people that I don't really care about. That is what I qualify as a loser's mentality. Only do what you want to do. 
I honestly think we're in this transition period where the older generation doesn't really get us. I don't wanna go and have the big wedding because I need to impress your family friends. I don't wanna go out there and have a really nice car to show that I'm wealthy online. But most people still do these things and that's why most people will not retire filthy rich. Next up is the lack of financial education in Australia is absolutely absurd. Now we are heading in the right direction, YouTube channels like this, as well as so many other creators out there are making financial education more applicable, more accessible, and also less taboo. Right now, so many people have not had conversations with their siblings, with their partners, with their parents, because it's been such a taboo topic. And when you think about it, you went through all of schooling, not getting taught anything about money. You don't know how to do your taxes. You had to figure that out. You didn't know that if you got a job and you had hex, some of your income goes towards hex and it's something you can't control. You didn't get taught that, you had to figure it out. And by the time people figure it out, if they're in the right circles, it could be five to 10 years. And if you think about it, in your 20s and 30s, this is the most important time in building wealth. Now, if you're someone who's migrated into Australia, it doesn't matter what age you're at, the first five years can determine whether you're gonna make it here or whether you're gonna struggle for the rest of your life in Australia. Living in Australia is not cheap and we all know that. And that's why making the moves earlier can make a big difference, a significant difference when it comes to retirement and having the choice. I think if you're in households that don't talk about money openly, if you're in a relationship that doesn't talk about money, you need to start having those conversations. Because think about it this way. If I'm by myself and I'm in this relationship where I say, okay, I've got these goals when it comes to finances, but I talk about my relationship goals with my partner, but I don't talk about my finances because that's taboo. What you're gonna find yourself in is an absolute car crash down the track. Because what I've had is so many strategy sessions with people where partners don't see eye to eye. In fact, I've seen so many separations during the process of them purchasing their first property. Why? Because you've got two parties that don't link when it comes to financial chemistry. And this is something that's so important. I'm by no means a couple expert, but I am a finance expert. And I like to think of that because I do this 24 seven and I help hundreds and hundreds of clients through the buyer's agency search property. If you need any help, there's a link in the description below to see what we actually do. I'd love to be making full-time videos for yourselves, but I run a company which is 40 full-time staff at the moment, and we help Australians like yourself get into property and scale up the portfolio. Not just go, hey, I wanna buy one property, thanks Ravi, all good. It's about how do we match that strategy and execute on that strategy to actually get to financial freedom and financial wealth. Another reason why we are kept back from actually achieving our full potential is because there's a lack of trust in the industry, in people and the system. What do I mean by this? Well, let's start with the system. I don't care about politics at all, purely because everything that they say is most likely a lie. They say that they're gonna promise all of these things, then they go and execute something completely different and they change their mind only weeks later. It's really pointless for me to put any energy towards thinking who's gonna win and how they're gonna change things. All I can do is figure out what my strategy is, what my vision is, what my actions are, and then I'm gonna adapt it to whatever happens in the world, whatever happens with the leaders here in Australia or overseas. But because politicians are basically liars, we have found ourselves not trusting the system. And what we think is every time there's something that comes out, it must be to screw us over. When you have this mentality of the system screwing us over every time something new gets introduced, it means that you're already on the back foot. You're like, I don't wanna hear what this person has to say. And that links closely with a lack of trust in the industry. So if you think about financial experts when it comes to financial planners, real estate agents, buyers agents, mortgage brokers, there's a lack of trust in that industry because there's a few bad eggs, a few bad players that are super unethical, trying to make as much money as soon as possible and they don't think about the bigger picture and reputation as well as brand. For me, I've made it very clear here that I like to produce more content than anyone else in the industry purely because I want you to go on the journey with me as I grow from someone who had no idea how YouTube works to now having Australia's number one real estate channel on YouTube. I want you guys to be on that journey, but I also want you to be on my personal journey so you guys keep me accountable. And as I share my journey, you're gonna learn so much more as well. I also think that it's so much harder to fake a life that you don't authentically lead. And by producing so much content, it allows you guys an insight as to how I am as a person and I have nothing to hide. Whereas there are a few bad eggs in the industry which try and put out this image of themselves that they're trying to help you, but the reality is they might just be lining up their pockets or screwing their clients over. And I'm talking about less than one of the 1% here. So there's not many out there, but because of that, that negative information looms larger on our mindset and how perception of the entire industry. So as a result, we don't listen to some of the advice that's coming out. 
You might have mentally already switched off going, oh, well, he might be trying to sell me something. But you may choose to just watch my videos and there's so many out of you out there that watch the videos but don't use the service. And that's completely fine as well. Now the service will get you the results that you actually want. And some people realize this over time that they can't execute themselves and they need the expert help. That's why that option exists. But simply because I have a service attached to it shouldn't mean that you don't take all the nuggets of gold that's coming out for free out of my mouth. And right now you can access all of my content on Spotify as well as YouTube through video and audio completely for free. I don't have ads on my channels and that's so that you can enjoy this completely ad free and you get to the nuggets of gold and the value even faster. Now after understanding and reflecting on our own goals and our own actions, we're probably realizing that we do a lot of the stuff, but not for ourselves, we do it for other people and not in the right way either. You don't do things like buy a new car to go, hey, I'm doing this for someone else. It's actually to go, hey, I wanna have this perception that I'm actually really wealthy. And so as a result of that, we found ourselves as a generation that's fallen into the trap of instant gratification and living a life that's not authentic at all. So what is the solution? Well, I'm gonna give it to you really plain and simple. It's delayed gratification and compound growth. Now, a couple of real quick tips here that you can take on. And I've spoken about these concepts before on the channels. You can watch all the way through this video. I'll link one really important video at the end of this one. And you can also check out the 500 or so videos that I've made over the last couple of years. Number one is the budgeting tip. The quickest way to budget is 50, 30, 20. This is a breakdown of how you're going to budget moving forward. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't even know if the financial advisor knows about how this works. 50% of your income should be going towards your needs. This is where you need shelter, you need food, things like that. 30% should go towards wants, and that might be living your best life. If you're going out for food or you're going out and entertaining, you know, whether it's with your siblings, parents, or with your partners, 30% goes there. And then 20% is usually used towards investing. If you can start with this model, it sort of gets you in the right frame of mind. Some people would argue 30% should be investing, 20% should be wants. But I think, especially if you're starting out, don't try and just extract everything and say, I'm gonna go cold turkey, I'm gonna raw dog this just like people do it on the flights. I'm gonna go out there and say, okay, I need to create a system that's sustainable. And the best way to do it is start with a model like this. What you'll end up finding is you'll have a portfolio that starts growing and you'll go, actually, I don't need to spend 50% of my income on shelter and food. I can reduce that. And that might mean that you're now investing 30, 40, 50% of your income and that is how you're gonna put yourself further ahead and have choice in the next 10 to 15 years. Another tip I have for you is invest early. Now, if you've got $20 right now that you can invest, you can actually do it. You've got micro investing apps, you can go into shares, you can go into ETFs. If you have more than that and you actually wanna buy property, do it the right way, please, because you can lose a lot of money when you use leverage and loans and debts. So do it the right way. If you have no idea how to, you need to get the experts on your end. And you can go out there and have a combination of these things. Get those investing muscles working. Just like you would go to the gym and say, I've never done a deadlift for 500 kilos. Why would I go and start with that? I might wanna go, hey, maybe I should just walk on the treadmill and get the investing muscle working. That's the exact same way we wanna do it with investing. Number three is focus on your vision and your strategy. If you have no idea where you wanna end up, there is no way you are gonna get there. You need to manifest it, you need to know what the vision is, you need to put actionable steps in and then go and execute. And again, a lot of this stuff you have control over. You don't need to care about if the market's gonna crash or it's not gonna crash. Get the fundamentals right and the rest will take care of itself. And finally, you only need two real estate investments, two properties, that is it, to be actually wealthy. And I break that down in a whiteboard video, which you can check out next right here. I'm not gonna steal my thunder from that video because it is one of the most popular videos on this channel with over 100,000 views and there's a reason for it. I want you to click on that video, go and watch it and understand that it's actually not that hard to get filthy rich or retire wealthy with choice. I just think that if you're trying to live your best life, you need to live it on your own terms and not just be trying to impress someone on social media. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And again, if you need the help, there's a link in the description below, searchproperty.com.au. That's where we help hundreds of Australians like yourself get into property and scale up with your portfolio. You can book in a free call and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.